Hi everyone, um, I'm going to talk you through our co-review policy at IOP Publishing, which is something that we implemented last June. So we've got some data on how it's panned out in the last six months or so. Um, so we implemented this on all of our owned journals and it's essentially a functionality for two reviewers to collaborate on their review with both reviewers getting recognition for their work and getting other kind of rewards and things that we give to reviewers. Um, I should say, actually, I gave this lightning talk a couple of weeks ago in seven minutes, so <laughs> there will be time at the end for questions, I'm guessing, because um, we've got 10. Um, this is a really dense slide, but I just wanted to start off by kind of addressing the question, why, why bother doing this? Why do we know that this is a problem that needed addressing? Um, there is some formal research on this question. Uh, this is a, pub, a paper published in eLife in 2019 where the researchers interviewed um, early career researchers um, in a range of different fields and asked them a ton of questions. These are the responses to, to questions regarding peer review. So they were asked, to your knowledge, did your PI ever withhold your name from the editorial staff when you served as the reviewer or co-reviewer? And that's pie chart A. And you can see that low, a really high proportion of people um, know that their name was withheld when they um, contributed towards a peer review report. Uh, and, and on the right hand side there, the question was, to your knowledge, did your PI ever submit your reviews without editing your work? And again, you've got this horribly big proportion of people who said that they know for a fact that their PI did this. So there is research on this topic, but actually, when you work with researchers in any kind of capacity, this is the elephant in the room. We, we know this happens because we just know. It's kind of built into the fabric of how academia works. You've got the mentor-mentee structure where the senior researcher or the supervisor um, has PhD students and the PhD students are just expected to get on with work. And some of that work is doing peer review reports. When you talk to early career researchers, this is a real frustration for them. Understandably so, they're putting a huge amount of work in, peer reviewing papers. Some of the best peer review reports you see come from PhD PhD students and early career researchers because they're keen and excited and they've got the time to put in the effort and create these really good reports. And yet very often they're creating these reports and the supervisors are submitting them on their behalf and these early career researchers aren't getting credit. So that's the problem that we wanted to try and address with this um, policy that we implemented. So what did we do? Um, well, here's what co-review is. It allows two brackets or more people to collaborate on a review report and the reason it says or more there is because we thought we'd done all of our due diligence and carefully planned every eventuality of this project and then obviously within a week of launching the functionality we had a supervisor get in touch and say actually I want to co-review with two PhD students so there's three of us collaborating at the same time and then we had to quickly go away and decide what our policy was going to be we decided three maximum, three people maximum collaborating on a report, that's okay. Any more than that is probably too many. Usually it is two people collaborating. We started with a trial on six of our journals, which was a successful trial. And we've rolled it out now. It's, I'm going to just be completely honest with you, it is not a perfect, beautiful, seamless process. And I'll, I'll go through in more detail what it kind of looks like and how we've made it work. Um, it isn't perfect. I'm happy to tell, talk to any of you about exactly what we've done. Um, but here's, here's how it works. So we invite somebody to review. In that email, there's obviously a list of decisions and ways that they can respond so that the top decision is accept the review. And previously, the other decisions were, you know, decline conflict of interest, decline because I'm unavailable, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the second decision in that email is co-review with a colleague. If they click co-review with a colleague, that's seen, it's usually the senior researcher who chooses to co-review. They're the person we've invited. Um, they add that colleague's um, name, they give us their name and email address, and they receive an email with instructions on how we expect them to work together on this review with their PhD student or postdoc. They've given us the details of their co-reviewer, so we then go and invite the co-reviewer. The co-reviewer accepts the manuscript, so we say in that email, 
so and so, your supervisor, professor, whatever, has nominated you to co review this manuscript. Here are some instructions for you on how we expect you to collaborate together. Um, the two reviewers collaborate offline, and the review is then submitted via the junior co reviewer's Scholar One account. So the junior co reviewer is now in our system and they've submitted their first review. Why do we like this system? So these are the kind of upsides. I'll go through the downsides in a minute. Um, that, that junior person is now in our database. Previously, when they were ghost writing peer reviews, we just had no oversight of who they were. Importantly, we can now invite them to review again. And as I say, often the quality is really high and these are people that we want in our database. We want their details. Um, both reviewers receive recognition in Web of Science Reviewer Recognition Service formerly known as Publons. I'm happy to share how we do this um, if anyone wants to know. Um, so they're receiving equal recognition externally. We have our IOP Trusted Reviewer Certification, which is a formal certification we give to our best peer reviewers. If the review is good enough to qualify, they both get IOP Trusted Reviewer status. They both get a 10% APC discount. This is really key for me the editor knows who's reviewing the paper. So previously, when people were ghostwriting these reviews, we just didn't have an oversight of who was looking at the paper. And I think that posed issues of confidentiality and ethics. And now we know. Senior reviewers, the feedback that we've got from the senior reviewers, that they're quite happy to share their workload. Um, having spoken to uh, a senior professor recently about our co-review policy, they said, oh, I'm going to accept an invitation from IOP Publishing every time now because I know I can co-review with a PhD student. It makes their lives easier. And the junior reviewer gets real practical experience of not only writing the peer review report, but of the whole process of submitting the peer review report as yeah. well. So these are the benefits and um, the initial results. This is as of I think this is as of December. So this is sort of the first six months of the program. Um, about 1500 researchers have been involved in care review since June 2023. That's roughly like 750 people choosing care review and 750 people being the co reviewers. Um, we found that care review is more popular among senior female reviewers. We know that senior female reviewers often have a higher workload or high workloads um, and are asked to sit on all kinds of committees and editorial boards and things so that might be something to do with it. Um, about half of the junior co-reviewers were brand new to our database. So that's really good news for us. We're getting all those lovely, shiny new ECR reviewers in. Um, so there was some talk when we kind of implemented this co-review policy about whether it would increase geographical diversity and, and, and um, you know contribute to our DEI figures um, but what we found was I mean this is predictable but what we found was that people tended to co-review with someone at their own institution so if you're inviting people from a certain institution or geography the likelihood is they're going to be your co-reviewers as well so it didn't make a massive difference to geographical diversity the, so we, our, our internal editorial teams rate all of the reviews we receive on a scale of one to five with the R score in Scholar One. Five is an outstanding review. Um, we've done an analysis of the average R scores of co-review reports and non-co-review reports. Co-review reports are significantly better on average than non-co-review reports. And I think that's a product of having, you know, really keen, eager, ECR working on it as well as someone senior with kind of the depth of knowledge and the, the history of, of peer review um, experience as well. Um, senior female reviewers were more likely to delegate to a junior male co-reviewer. That was another thing that we found. Um, OK, yeah, that was the last step. But as I said, it's not perfect. So what we wanted to do when we implemented co-review is work with the tools that we had right now. I think it's easy to, um, as publishers, imagine a future where we have these beautiful, um, configurable submission processes and tools and programs that can easily do these things. But actually, you can wait a really long time before you get kind of that kind of software. So we wanted to just try and work with what we had, which was Scholar One. Um, so here are the reasons that it's not quite perfect. 
only one peer reviewer can receive the manuscript and submit the review. I've got one minute left. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I think this is the last slide. Um, so the, what would be ideal is if they could collaborate in real time together, kind of in similar to a live Word document environment, but instead we can't do that. Um, the system can be confusing. The back end processes are a bit sort of gnarly. Um, and sometimes co-reviewer details aren't added by the senior co-reviewer. And sometimes by the time we get around to inviting the co-reviewer, the paper already has enough reviewers agreed. And then, you know, we don't get to invite that co-reviewer or we have three or four people agree on the paper. So hopefully in the next few years, we'll start to see kind of better systems for this. And this is the last slide. Initial feedback from our community is that um, particularly early career researchers really like and value this functionality. That's it.